what we are going to be doing today is putting together the GTEC Air and Mark 1 K9, which is all washed, all polished, all laid out down here. Basically to show you all the parts of it and to make it easier for us to grab bits as we need. So, let me assume the position, we shall find some tools, and by the end of this video, hopefully have this cordless vacuum sweeper back together. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums, how are you today? We need to get all of this into a machine, really. So, yes, the whole thing's come up really rather nicely indeed. All of the fluff has now gone from the motor. Yes. <laughs> It's just clean. There's not really many ways I can explain it, you know, without just sounding stupid. It's just very clean, very nice, and very shiny, which you'll see, hopefully, as we go through. So, need to remember what the heck we did to get this thing apart. And the first thing I think we need to do is to put the motor together which will hopefully just be as simple as pushing this in like so finding the two machine screws and screwing it in from the front that then once the two screws are in the fan which has a key at the back of it simply drops on there like so and we can put the nut back on that secures it and there we go Next thing that we can put on is the other side of the fan case, which is here. Now once you have the motor housing like this, with the wires ready to be pushed back where they belong, we need to start getting the gearbox casing on. And with our modification with the Dremel, it now goes on a lot easier. So slide it in, you've got to manoeuvre the wires through their newfound roots. Gently push down until it all sort of clicks into place and lines up. Which it's almost done now. The screws should pull that back together quite nicely indeed. So there's that part with a little bit of be careful of that. Look, there's a frayed wire which might touch and short out, but hopefully it will be okay. And obviously before we just go and put that side on and do it up, is the slight issue of the other bits and bobs that need to go in. 
so this here is that in place. I'm just going to stick a small drop of oil on the bearings because that won't hurt them to just have a little bit in there. And then we have this, which is the cog, which will go in just underneath this part. So lift that out of the way. And just dry fit everything really, make sure that everything spins absolutely beautifully, which it does. Stick a drop on this bearing, which is actually the one that was really stiff. And that's just gone nice and silent again. In fact, we can do that when it's back together. So with that side on and everything done up, we can move the wires out of the way. And once we know that fits on, I've got some grease here, just some bearing grease. I'll put a nice big splodge of that on there. Just to keep that running a little bit happy. And then we can do the lid up and put all four of the gearbox screws back in. Quick twist of the fan case to make sure that everything still rotates. Job is a good one. In fact, now we need to take the two screws that hold the gearbox to the motor assembly and screw those in. And this will now pull everything motor related into shape. And then with the motor all buttoned up, we'll stick a nice big drop of oil on the two shaft bearings like so. And then hope that we have it together correctly, because if we haven't, this will spin the wrong way. But at the minute, there isn't really any way that we can test that until it's back together. It is a bit of a pain. So we shall hope for the best. and put this plastic cover onto there and then we can put this plastic cover into there and put the long top screw in like that and then the bottom one like so. There we have our complete motor and gearbox assembly for the Airam Mark 1 all sorted and ready to go. With that out of the way we can move on actually to the top and start to reconnect the wires that we disconnected and fit all of the parts. So. We shall feed the power switch cable down here and then oh, let's just lift you up a little bit for a second. There we go, we've got to stick that on there and then pop its two small screws which is quite difficult to do and see. I think that right in back to the front. Ooh, which way does it go? I call that way. There 
we go. Those two screws are in, and the, this cable will run down there, but we'll do that in a bit because we may as well get the top fully built up first. And we do that by putting this top cover on with its four screws, like so. Then we can put the switch itself into place. So hopefully, just push in until it clicks. And that is at least that bit all done. Next, we need this broken part actually, which we look to be able to screw the little circuit board to first perhaps to make it easier to get on we'll see i'm hoping this isn't too much of a critical thing we can certainly glue it on if needed that's for sure ah no need that it just snaps in nicely there's a little crack there now but i don't think anybody's going to mind that too much at all so with that done oh gosh uh, we can look to push the little circuit board right in and then from the back I have to try and plug that into there so hang on we go so that's the battery indicator plugged into the circuit board at least then these wires need to start to go down to the bottom and these two wires do joining up which I'm going to cheat and after we have paired them back We get some appropriately sized heat shrink tubing and because this thing is a battery powered and therefore you know, very low voltage, very low power, we can, I'm going to chop these down a little bit, in fact no I'm not, we'll just pull those open more, it's going to be hidden. We can slide a piece of heat shrink over, twist the wires together to form actually this is the joint that I would start with to solder if you joint looking like that and yes you could solder it but we are going to slide the heat shrink over And there we go. Same on the other side. This is how we're going to do the other wires down the bottom as well. There's just this, that's the okay thing about battery vacuums. If you need to cut wires, it is much simpler to reconnect them than with you know full 240 volt mains powered ones. Oh, you would run out of gas now, wouldn't you? Thought that would happen. That's my daily that zippo. <laughs> the fluids in my car, though. There we go. And we can simply tuck the wires through the cable chases. And as you can see, that joint is just nicely out of the way. Not going to harm nothing or anybody. There we 
good, hopefully. Now, Oh, please don't tell me that. No, it shouldn't. Oh, I do hope that this top bit hasn't got to come back off. Let's see why it should. Those wires are routed through the wrong hole, that's for sure. And that's the back onto the spine. So now we have this bit done, we can start to build up this. And we start with the latch itself, which the tight form spring goes on there. This then sits on here and then screws on. It is quite fiddly. But what you can do is start the screw off and clip it into the housing from its other side and simply screw it up nice and tight and it should bounce around then from the other from the right way it goes in from the bottom as you can see, that's springy. That's a lot further out than it was when we first started this caper all that time ago. So that's jolly good. Although I think it's still got some room to manoeuvre. Because it all relies on being pushed up from underneath anyway. This all floats. It's not screwed in nice and tight. So with that in, underneath is held with a very tidy wheel and a metal rod, which clips in just under there. And again, we'll stick just a little drop of oil just to shut it up and stop it from ever complaining about anything again. Beautiful. Right. The next thing to do is to put the bottom onto this, button it all up, and then we can start to screw it into place. Ooh. I've also just looked down and realised that I've forgotten the two springs that go in here. Although hopefully, if I can grip the, th the head of the screw, we can just take one out. Oh no, they, they do both have to come out because the springs go underneath. Oh, I thought it was a bit floppy. Never ignore a floppy. Come on. Go 
Josh. That's now exactly the same as it was. The problem is it's supposed to push from underneath when it's all together. Um, it doesn't like pushing from underneath when it's all together. It's really not that good. This is a bit of a pain. Right, we'll stick a small smear of oil just around the contact points of this part because you can see lots of scrapey, scrapey from years of metal on metal contact. So there we go, yeah. It works, but only when it's pushed in from the bottom. And with this screw done up nice and tight, it will eventually lock, but it won't now. So that is as far as we can go. What we can do, though, is start to push the cables into where they need to go. We might have a bit more slack to push back, although if you do a spin, you can generally tell and then have it, there we go, that'll be more than enough slack for whatever might occur. Right. Next up are these corner pieces, which I can't actually fully remember what they do, but they all go on this way round. I can remember which way round these go, I should have remembered. Ah, there we go, look. I think. Ooh. Do you know what? I've completely forgotten which way these go. a problem when I do machines that I haven't really done before only once or twice I can't remember you, you can't fully remember I think it must go that way there's whole clips down there let me go and research this hang on do you know we were 100% correct they do go exactly like that and form the wheel housing. So we'll take off the two little nuts and well, I'll get these screwed up. With those corner bits in, we can, or should, I think, actually move partly to this piece, because soon we'll be able to stick them together. And the first thing to do is to push these rubber you know, covers, I suppose you could call them, into position. And hopefully we can lay this on With this part now nicely in place, and we'll attend to the wiring in a minute, we can start to assemble the rest of it. And well, we have these two wheel covers here, which go on like so with a screw 
inside somewhere. Uh, ah, under rear wheels. There it is. Then we can start to assemble the wheels themselves. A little drop of oil just to keep them from being noisy in operation. <laughs> oh, no, wait, that's the wrong size washer. It's a thin one on the outer edge, isn't it? There it is. And the circlet will either go on very easily. Or very difficultly. And actually, that's all the wheels on the machine now because the two at the front. Although, we need to pull this one out, because I didn't do this before, but this one seems to have seized up. And I think it's because all of the dirt that is inside of it got damp, and obviously is now binding up. That's much better. Much better indeed. drop of oil on there as well gosh so at this stage oh I do think we should make a start on the wiring which you know isn't going to be terribly inefficient Because one just screws into place here on this side. And the other screws into place. Oh, there we go. On this side. I think I flipped the wires around whilst we've been doing this. But it A won't make a difference anyway because it, it won't care. B we can just flip them around down here. Oh, that one's just gone underneath there, though. Next thing we actually need to put together is the bin latch itself, purely because it actually holds some of the cables into place, and this is ever so fiddly, because you have to get the pin through on one side, and then the spring, and then the other wheel. And then get its pin in without letting go. If you let go, it goes flying, as it did actually when we took it apart. Oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> And with that in, it actually screwed down, because I have it screwed here.
with that, everything is all in place. And actually, we can now pop this back on, put the battery in. Oh, oh the power! Beautiful, right. I think actually the next step is to put this bit in. So oh, let me get a drink and have a five minute breather and then we'll get right on that. So with this in, um, working well, these have to spin that way or that way basically. So they throw the dirt into the bin. So if it spins the other way around, whip it off, take the side of the gearbox off, take the cog and stick it in so it's on top and put it back together and you'll be absolutely fine. Right, we have the four screws now that hold the dirt bin into place. Then actually I think we're not too far off at all. So I'll put this in. Be a lot better now. It's not full of dirt and crud underneath this. That's for sure. Be very good indeed. These two on the front, like so. All right. Next, I think it's this part. In fact, it's sort of both of these, isn't it? And I know we can put two of the screws in straight away, which is going to make it so much easier. So we'll put the, these two centre screws in, because if any of them... These are going to be the ones that are a pain, although I think the corner ones need to go in as well. So we'll do both of these. Very quickly, going to be finished now. So these aren't too difficult, I'll be honest. And you know, if you can pick one up for really cheap and do this, you're going to get an absolute buy. I'm still quite chuffed with it, especially for the fifteen pounds that I've paid. It turns out it doesn't even need a cog. Literally, just needed taking apart, cleaning, and putting back together again. These just don't like use. I imagine we'll be doing a you know, six or twelve month update on this. There we go. Right. Now we can flip it over. And put all of these screws in. Let's do the front first because that will help nip it all together. A piece. We are, aren't we? Ah, take out the end screws and the middle screw. Drop this. There we go, look. Pop the end ones in to put the front of the base plate on. While we're here, we have the four screws underneath that hold the motor in from underneath to go in. Now our row of static brushes, which aren't being held in dust hell, which is always nice. One, two, 
Right, I'll just do one first. Next, we need our bash rolls. We need to pop both end pieces in to one and then push the whole end onto the motor spindle and then drop of oil on there nicely And on the end caps go, and the rear ones are the long ones, the front ones are the short ones. Just like it was when we took it apart all those times ago. I think that might have just cross threaded. Oh, I'm sure we're about to find out if it's okay or not. Oh, oh. that's what it should sound like, folks. There we go, and that is now. Working fine, uh, working fine, I caught it. Right, now we have the tail of two fins, don't we? Well, I have actually noticed, although I'm going to peel off, look, they've got two different types of sticker on. Both say the same thing. We're going to get rid of that one because this is terrible. And yeah, obviously we have two sets of filters. and These have been through the washing machine, look. Just like new. Not quite sure which bin we will use. Although what I do know is obviously because I'm going to give this to my mother. I'm tempted to give her both sets of filters. Just because that way she can wash a set. And use a set. I don't know. I'll have to see what she says. Otherwise I'll sell it. Sorry. Well, I can tell you is those, they are not easy to get in. And we'll drop that into the bin. And, well, since you were ready first, you can go on first. Ugh. I know you can't go on first. I've forgotten to keep it. These come off. As I found out. So I took them off because they were filthy underneath. There we go. away now I have made some space and wow that these really aren't that tricky to do I I love them and I hate them either way we need to put the handle back together it's just a case of click and then we need 
to actually refit the handle in until it clicks and by crikey that is done there's the charger but we don't need that right now oh, we care that is this as well we know it works but you know how well oh that is actually very good just carpet sweepers this is a hundred watts it relies on that brush roll which is why you have to get the cog the right way around it has to flick it in to the bin otherwise it won't work at all but uh, I, they're really really quite good at what they do it's when you try and use them as a full-size vacuum cleaner that they fail what is in the bin well actually quite a lot of dirt and dust I'm going to have to vacuum the filters off again now before I give them some love my mother can't argue with that I mean I still don't love them I still think they're incredibly overpriced but you know £15 I paid for all of this and we now have I don't have a G Tech Air Ram Mark 1 K9, which is as good as new. With, I mean, it's a spare bin. I might see if you know, mum just wants to keep the filters, and I'll just throw this away. I think that's going to be the nice bit. So, this is going to be her upstairs vacuum. She sent there, sent the house now, it's on the market. And she actually said to me the other day, once I filmed the before video, do I have anything she could borrow just to run around before anybody comes around? Ideal, and then when that's done, it'll just be the upstairs machine get poked around when she doesn't want to do the big vacuum. And actually, that is what these are for. And at £15, I am very, very pleased with it. So, I hope this has probably been a quite a boring video. I, I don't know how to present it really, I don't do many of the putting it back together stuff. So it is what it is. I hope you I've sort of made it at least not, you know, suicidal, just quite boring. And you might have learnt something with these fiddly things. There is a thread to go with this on the Manchester Vax form, which is one of these, but step-by-step -step pictures apart and back together. And now this, yeah, we have the after. I have, I guess but this is the after. There's not enough content to film its own after video. Of the G Tech Airman K9. So we will probably see this again. I'm going to try and have it back in, you know, next summer maybe, see how it's doing, see how it's getting on. And yeah, basically for now, thank you very much for watching. And I and this G Tech Airman K9 Mark 1 will see you soon. Bye bye.